What's happening guys and welcome back to the channel for today's video We're gonna be checking out the Transformers Legacy Evolution Core Class Optimus Prime and Bumblebee now as we very quickly take a look here at the packaging fantastic artwork These guys look great, but as we come around here to the back of the box Initially, I wasn't gonna pick this up because I already own Optimus Prime and Bumblebee But when I was taking a look at some of the official renders the trailer to me that comes with this set Does seem to be a lot nicer when in comparison to the leader class Earthrise version, so I'm definitely very excited to check this out. So with all that being said, let's get cracking. Now we're going to be kickstarting this review off by checking out Bumblebee because apparently you can never have too many of this guy and for the most part he is just a very minor repaint of the original Buzzworthy exclusive which they brought out a few years back but to be fair I do think this is one of the best core class Autobots which they've so far released because both modes are solid and the vehicle mode is actually kind of great. I mean whilst it's not officially licensed it is close enough to how he did show up in the original 80s series and one thing which I love about this guy is he glides like an absolute dream. Even better than some of the more recent deluxe voyages and leaders that we've checked out So he will have no problemos in rolling out into battle alongside Optimus Prime But anyway to get stuck into transformation you take these pieces here and flare them upwards We can then take what will become the forearms in the robot mode and then take the shoulder joints Slide these sections here outwards and do the exact same here for this side So slide that section out. I then really like this next step So we extend this piece here outwards which will reveal the skirt piece of the robot mode and then you basically take the front end of the vehicle, lift this up, and it does form his feet. You know, it's very simple, but really effective. We can then split right down the middle, come around here to the back, and then what you're going to want to do is take this section here, bring it backwards, and then once you reach a certain point, we can then take this panel, fold this inwards, and the entire back piece will lock into place very securely. We can then fold down the shoulders, and bang! There we have Bumblebee, fully transformed into his robot mode. And again, a really cool looking figure, very accurate to how he did show up back in G1 and I think this is one of the nicest 80s inspired Bumblebee head sculpts which we've seen. I mean to be fair I think it's so much nicer than what we got from the Netflix version. It really does look like how he appeared back in G1 and in terms of robot mode for a tiny little dude I do think he's a pretty cool looking figure. Now in terms of articulation the head is on a hinge joint so you can bring this here forwards and backwards as well as rotate it left to right. We get some great ball joints here for the shoulders which can go in and out. The same could be said here for the elbows. I really like the hips because not only can they go forwards, backwards, and out to the sides, but in addition to the ball joint that we have here for the hip, you also get this separate thigh swivel, which I wasn't expecting for a core class. So, yeah, that's pretty great. And due to transformation, technically, we get like triple jointed knees. So, yeah, that's kind of crazy. Depending on how you move them, they can look a little strange, but that is a wicked range of motion. So, yeah, all in all, a really nicely done figure. I will be touching base with his weapons later on in the video once we check out the trailer, but for now, Let's bring out the leader of the Autobots, Optimus Prime, who, much like Bumblebee, is a very minor repaint of his original release, but still, not a bad looking core class. To be fair, I don't favour this mould as much as I do the Bumblebee. I do think there are a few things here which maybe they could have done a little better with, especially for Optimus Prime. You know, you think maybe they would have made this guy a little better, but it gets the job done. So in terms of truck mode, great details up front. The trailer bed doesn't look too bad, but this will kind of go through a makeover later on in the video, which is kind of cool. Let's get stuck into these transformations. So to kick start things off with here, you're going to want to take the thighs, disengage these away from what will become the forearms in robot mode. We can then bring these pieces here out to the sides, rotate here at the elbow, take the hands and fold these here outwards and do the same here for this side. These are very small figures, so I'm hoping I can showcase the transformation in as much detail as possible. We can then take this section here, flip this upwards and to be fair, it does just kind of rest along the front grille. You'll then want to extend the shoulders here upwards and rotate this section here around and as we flip him around here to the back that tiny little slot is going to snap into that tab so peg that in there we can then split the legs down the middle and for a finishing touch personally I would recommend to bring in the aid of a weapon because you're kind of going to want to poke this section otherwise it's going to be so difficult to pry Prime's head out so bring this section here down lift the head up and bang there we have Optimus Prime fully transformed into his robot mode much better looking in bot mode than truck mode and much like Bumblebee surprise very accurate to how he originally appeared back in the 80s. You know, these core class figures, for the most part, are smashed 
bashing it. I think they are the best kind of scale entry that we've seen for modern Transformers in a very long time. And I hope they're here to stay because, yeah, they are super fun, especially to kind of mess around with Titan class figures. But as we take a look here at the details, really nicely done looking head sculpt because they have decided to go over slightly more animation accurate color deco. The windscreen looks better as so does the color here for the thighs. And I also like how they did get rid of the silver paint here for the shins because, again, this does harken back to how he showed up in the 80s series. So, yeah, pretty decent looking figure. In terms of his articulation, the head is on a swivel, so we'll look left to right. The shoulders are on ball joints, as so are the elbows. Technically, he does have a waist joint due to transformation, so you will want to lift this flap up to just kind of get it out of the way. So this can rotate the full 360. Definitely good when posing this guy, which is great. We also kind of get ab crunch due to transformation, so that's pretty cool. And then in terms of the hips, these can go forwards that far, back to that far, out to the sides. We technically get a ball joint here for the knee, although you're not going to want to move it around too much, as, as you can see the hips do like to kind of destroy themselves and these can bend roughly to 90 so i believe that just about wraps up for both prime and bumblebee let's take a look at the star of the show which, of course, is Optimus Prime's classic G1 trailer. And this is actually great. This is the main reason why I picked this set up. And I think if you own the previous Core B and previous Core Optimus, then yeah, this is really the only reason why I would recommend to pick this set up because this is pretty great. Now, you may be thinking to yourselves, you know, it's basically just a hollow box. Personally, I think this is so much better, way nicer detailed when in comparison to the version that was released with the Earthrise Leader Class Optimus Prime. For example, the grey colour is way more animation accurate. The details are on point. I mean, as we spin it around here to the back, check that out. That's pretty cool. And even as we flip it here to the underside, very nicely detailed. It does look pretty epic. And the gimmicks they've packed into this too, I think are superior to that original Earthrise version. But another thing I want to mention is how well built it is. You know, it doesn't feel flexible. It doesn't feel flimsy. It is made out of super sturdy plastic, which is kind of surprising considering that it is designed to scale with core class figures. You can take this section to kind of have it propped up on its own, which is pretty cool. And yes, it does open up like the previous version. So as you guys can see, that does showcase a whole array of weaponry for both Prime and Bumblebee. So first up, we get the Energon Axe, which prior to the release of this set was only exclusive with the Nemesis Prime. So great to see that reissued in a more animation accurate color deco. We also get this brand new more g1 accurate blaster for bumblebee to use which we never saw included with the original release so that's epic and then the same traditional ion blaster for optimus prime to have in robot mode so that's great and in addition to all of these accessories we also get the same small blaster that bumblebee did originally include so bumblebee has two weapons as so does optimus prime which is pretty great we also get this section which can store away here inside the trailer you'll use this slightly more when we check out prime and truck mode basically for robot mode this is a riot shield and it's actually a pretty cool idea i mean in terms of detail does look pretty great and i also like how we kind of get this drone that prime has packed inside the trailer and surprisingly this too is very well done i mean all of kind of the joints that are on this hydraulic piece are pinned on so nothing on this feels flimsy which is epic you can take the radar dish raise that up the claw too is independent and is articulated at two individual points which is pretty nice and there are so many ways in how you can integrate this with the trailer and with optimus prime which i'll showcase in just a second but before we do that we have to check out Roller, who technically is a character in his own right. And yeah, this is great. You know, this is something which I think we should have seen included with that original Earthrise Optimus Prime, because how can you give us that classic G1 trailer and not a Roller? But as you guys can see, considering its size, it has been very nicely detailed. I mean, we do get kind of a few effect posts here on the back for you to attach blast effects onto. They did detail the interior, which is pretty nice. And I was super shocked to see that every single one of the wheels do move. I was kind of thinking that maybe the middle one would be static but absolutely not so that's epic and as we turn it here to the underside much like the trailer it has been very nicely detailed so yeah this really does come with all of the bells and whistles that i would expect from your traditional g1 optimus prime if they ever do release a studio series 86 optimus i'm hoping that we see everything that we've got here included with that because when you kind of look back on it earthrise prime was definitely slacking now, in terms of how everything here exactly works with one another, we're first of all going to touch base with an issue that I personally have found with this trailer, and it's that the post that you use to connect it is just way too short and stubby. I mean, considering that a specific function is to be towed, it does kind of suck that it takes next to no effort at all to dislodge the trailer from either Prime or Roller. So, yeah, that does kind of suck. I mean, look how small it is. I have no idea why they decided to shorten it that much. But anyway, in terms of attaching it here onto Roller, it doesn't work out 
out too badly, you know, you can have this guy rolling out into battle, which is pretty cool, and every single wheel that you see here does roll, which is epic. Now, in terms of Optimus Prime, as I'm sure you guys may remember, this was never specifically intended to tow a trailer, so that's where you bring in this kind of riot shield, which I showcased previously, place it over the back of Prime's trailer bed, and it will create a trailer hitch, and I do quite like the way this looks. Maybe they should have cast this out of blue plastic to better blend in with the back of the legs, but to be fair, I think it looks pretty great, and yeah, you know, you can have Prime towing the trailer as well, although unfortunately, Optimus has the worst rolling wheels of any core class figure that I've so far checked out, so it is kind of a shame that Bumblebee can roll out even better than Optimus Prime himself. Now, in terms of what you can store inside the trailer, Roller can fit in there with no problems at all. Unfortunately, there's not a specific tab for him to lock in, so he does just kind of rattle around in there, considering that he is a lot smaller when in comparison to other core class figures, which, talking of, it is possible to fit Bumblebee in there with no problems. You know, you can close the ramp up, so that's pretty cool, but Bumblebee is the only character which I have found to be able to fit in there, because if we bring the likes of Ironhide in, unfortunately, Ironhide is just too tall. You know, if you push him in a little too far, bang, it will cause the trailer to kind of explode, and because the issue is roughly, I'd say, half a centimeter, it is kind of a shame that the designers did not make the trailer just slightly bigger to accommodate other core class figures than as opposed to just being exclusive for Bumblebee. So yeah, that in itself is also a bit of a shame. And in terms of this drone, there are two ways in how you can display it on the trailer. So you can kind of have it coming out of the front of the trailer, which I thought was pretty cool, or you can remove it entirely and place it onto the top of the trailer to kind of create this weaponized look, which to be fair, I think is actually how I'm going to be displaying this on the shelf. And something worth mentioning is that much like any of the previous G1 trailers, you can stand it upright and have it acting almost as a repair bay for Optimus Prime. Now as we check out a few comparisons, here we have the two-pack version of Bumblebee on the left and the original Buzzworthy release here on the right. So exactly the same mould, the only difference this time round, as I said previously, is this guy does harken back slightly more to how he showed up in the 80s. So the wheels are a little more grey, the yellow's a little brighter, and he does have that really kind of bright cell shaded effect going on for the windows. Personally, I do like both of them. If I was to choose one, however, I'm a sucker for accuracy, so I would have to give it here to the two-pack version. But then as saying that, the metallic blue on the buzzworthy release also is pretty sweet here is our B stacks up alongside Optimus Prime, so in terms of scale, of course, it doesn't match up to what we saw from the show, but average core class scale. Here is the two-pack Prime alongside the original regular release in truck mode, and here, to me, there's no competition. The new version is way nicer, in my opinion. The colors are so much more vibrant. I mean, check out the red, check out the silver, and in particular, that blue up front. So, yeah, I definitely do prefer the look here of the two-pack version over the initial one. Here is our Optimus Prime stacks up alongside another core class Autobot that in the form of Ironhide. Here's core class Bumblebee alongside his Netflix rendition which is officially licensed. As I said previously, I don't really find it to be much of a shame that this also isn't officially licensed because it's close enough to how he appeared on the show. I mean the second you look at this guy you can immediately tell that it's supposed to be a G1 Bumblebee. And then for an Optimus Prime comparison, here we have the Earthrise version alongside the Core Class release. And like I said previously, personally, I think the Core Class trailer is vastly superior when in comparison here to the Earthrise version. I mean, the color is just better. The placement of the Autobot insignia is better. It's just much better overall. So yeah, I do in some ways hope that if they ever are to release a Studio Series 86 Optimus, that they basically just upscale this trailer because personally, I think it is pretty much perfect. Now as we check out a few robot mode comparisons, on the left we have the new 2-pack version of Bumblebee compared to the right, which is the original Buzzworthy release. Much like in vehicle mode, I am a sucker for animation accuracy, so in this case, I do think the new 2-pack version takes the win. Here he is compared alongside the core class Optimus Prime, the Netflix Earthrise Bumblebee, which is a fantastic figure, but like I mentioned previously, I do think the core class release has a more G1 accurate looking head sculpt when in comparison here to this Netflix version. So so much like Earthrise Prime, I think it may be time for Hasbro to give us some Studio Series 86 versions of some of these popular characters. And then comparison time for Optimus Prime, here is the new version on the left and the original version here on the right. Here he is with the core class Kingdom Megatron. And then finally, the leader class Earthrise Optimus Prime. 
And so, wrapping up on this review for the Transformers Legacy, Evolution, Core Class, Optimus Prime, and Bumblebee. Overall, I think it's a great set, but what I will say is that if you already own the individual releases for both Prime and Bumblebee, then personally, I would recommend to wait for this to go on sale. At the time of this recording, this is reselling for a whopping $40, which if you're just after the trailer, personally, I don't really think is justified. And I know Optimus Prime and Bumblebee are in some ways upgrades over their original counterparts because they are more animation accurate in terms of their decos and they do come with better weapons but they're not the most mind-blowing molds in the world and to be fair guys because they have been on the market for quite some time I can't really see this set being a super hot seller you know selling out within the first couple of weeks so I would really recommend to just hold out for as long as you possibly can go but it's a great idea it's something that I hope we can maybe see more of going forwards because core class almost play sets are definitely something I'd be interested in I'd love to get your thoughts on this set down in the comment section below what do you guys think and until my next video i'll see you then thanks for watching